How are y'all this morning? Fine. Good. 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 Man, it's good to have you. We are so excited about uh, what God's doing. So we're on week uh, four of family things. That's with an A. Uh, so the first week we covered uh, the foundation of a Christian family, how Noah brought his family by faith into salvation. Week two, we covered the godly husbands. Week three, Christina covered the wife. And this uh, this uh, cover the wives last week. She did a really good job, too. And for this Sunday, we're going to discuss week four, close up the series of family things. And this one is called Raise Them Up Right. And so I want you to hear, you can apply this to your uh, family. If you're single, you apply it to yourself, apply it to your church family, relationships, grandparents. Uh, we have a lot of grandparents raising children nowadays, so understand that this uh, this is all gonna uh, it's all gonna touch your heart because you want to leave a legacy. So we're going to talk about leaving a kingdom legacy this morning. But let me pray for uh, this service and for y'all this morning, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for um, all these beautiful people this morning, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing uh, here in the Hill Country, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our communities. We thank you, Jesus, that uh, you're touching our families. That you're moving in our lives, Father, that you are preparing our hearts, Father, so we can prepare our families to move into the things of God, to become kingdom-minded. And we thank you, Lord, for supplying all of our needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus. And we ask you, Lord, that your presence falls upon this place and that we learn from the Word of God this morning, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so I, it was Christina said, did such a good job. Um, it opened my eyes to it's it's crazy when I when she told me, man, when you preached about godly husbands, I really didn't understand the needs that I that I needed, and and I said, well, that's cool because um, I kind of copied her message when I wrote mine because she wanted me to look hers over. Well, I didn't realize that I needed the stuff she was talking about. So we just learned together as a couple um, in a marriage that we learn from each other that, man, there's needs that I didn't expect and that you didn't expect, but thank you, Lord, that you showed us that so we can get better. And then once I, what I want to talk about this morning is there are needs for our children. And who, who wants to see their children prosper? Who wants to see them be good people? The Bible says you, want to, you're, you, you should leave your children with a good name and inheritance for your children's children. And so it's very important in 2022 as we're facing uh, this society uh, and we're, we just look at dark stuff all the time. We see uh, sin. Um, and so it's just really hard to not look at the forefront of all the sin and all the controversy and the political mess. And then the direction a lot of kids, and I don't know what I'm going to do with my children, you know, when they're growing up in this society. Well, the word of God's clear. Let's get into it today. And as I began to, to build this message, I was praying. And the Lord said, uh, I want you to tell them to look at a scale. Um, you know, a weight balance. Not a scale where I step on and I'm ha not happy with myself. Not where I look down and go, man, this is stupid. And I, I put the scale back up in the closet. I'm talking about a weight balance scale. Like a legal scale. Y'all getting what I'm saying? And the Lord showed me that in prayer. And I want to start with envisioning a scale just like that in your mind. Not like the one, like I said, in the bathroom, but the one that is a symbol of justice. And on one side, you have love. On one side, you have discipline. Are you seeing where I'm going with this? And so as we guide our family, we have to have love and discipline, but there has to be a balanced weight right there. And you know why? Because one t sometimes when you reach in, you have to discipline your children. You have to go over here and you have to pull out of the love reserve. Are y'all he hearing me now? If you want to love on your children, discipline means that you love them. Who the Father loves, He corrects. So when you want to discipline your children, you have to go over here and you have to pull out of the discipline because you have a balance here where you have to have the reserves up where you can pull out a one, but it won't get uneven. So I want you to think about that as I preach today. And applying either one too often without the other is harmful for our families. Love plus discipline is the balance. That's the equation we want to we want to have in our minds and our hearts as I preach today. And this is an important message as I've ever preached. I'm telling you, my heart told me this. Um, 
I, I'm a fiery preacher. I like preaching the cross. I like preaching the resurrection. I like preaching, uh, man, I like preaching uh, in repentance is such a good thing because you can turn from sin and turn to the Lord. I love preaching where I can get down and preach the gospel. But the Lord said, this is one of the most important messages you're ever going to preach. And I said, man, and he showed me why. And as I wrap up our last week of family things, one word came to my mind today, uh, and, and it's legacy. Legacy, 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 legacy. And legacy defined is something transmitted by or received from an ancestor or predecessor or from the past. It's a generational passing of an inheritance or goods. So it's something that you pass on. Now, legacy is a very important thing in each of our lives. And my heart tells me this morning that uh, this message is something that we have to lay down the foundation in our family. And the key scripture this morning is Proverbs 22, 6. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. And I'm a product of this. You see, the grace of Jesus came into my life when I had no hope. I was out on a field. I was addicted to... I, I took 21 Vicodin, 10 milligram one morning. Y'all have all heard my testimony, but I'll tell it again because it's the best sermon you can preach. I was high as a kite. I had OD'd uh, two weeks in a row. And I was trying for another OD. And I had my pistol and I had no hope. I had lost everything to a pain pill addiction. And I was sitting there. And I was on this field where I hunted for arrowheads. And, the, and I had that pistol to my head and the Lord uh, just felt in my heart I said Lord I'm so sorry and Jesus reached out and said when you feel nobody else loves you I love you and I heard it three times in my heart and I started crying and it changed my life you see I'm up here behind this pulpit because of what my mom and dad instilled into me are y'all hearing what I'm preaching this morning you see it saved my life See, I'm preaching something and now I know why my heart tells me it's so important. I'm preaching the truth today because it saved my life. My mom and dad raised me up right. They raised me in a church. They raised me in the ministry. I saw the power of God and I backslid. And I did not handle my life properly. But in the moment of life or death, Jesus' love came through because the Bible says nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. Amen. Nothing. Amen. There's no spirits, no principalities, there's no mountains, there's no valleys, there's no waters. There is nothing. You cannot even separate yourself from the love of Christ. Amen. And when he came through that day, guess what? When you raise a child up, there was a touch of faith. And that touch of faith that I still had when I had no hope left saved my life. Amen. Now you know what I'm Amen. preaching this morning. You see, this message is crucial for our families and our children and ourselves. And I know... It saved my life. So I want you to hear the importance of it. Let's discuss the legacy in our children and our grandchildren today. Point number one, what are you going to leave? You see, like death and taxes, leaving a legacy in an area in your life, some of us really don't have a choice. You're going to have to pay taxes and you're going to die. You don't have a choice in that. And as a parent, you are going to pass on an inheritance to your kids or you grandparents are going to pass that legacy on to your grandchildren. And this type of inheritance, I want you to understand that you leave to your children depends on you. It don't depend on anybody else. It don't depend on the government. It don't depend on school teachers. It don't depend on your other family members. It depends on you. What their future hold is what you're going to instill in them. And you better be instilling the things of God into them. Proverbs 13, 22. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. All too often people tend to think in legacy in terms of money. That's an unfortunate mistake. Now, be wise in money. Invest well. Be diligent with what the Lord has blessed you with. And try to leave your family a legacy of monetary gain. Get life insurance. You know, do whatever you have to do to make sure your family is taken care of. But I'm talking about something more important this morning. A spiritual legacy is worth all the gold in the world. Can I get an amen? Amen. I'm going to say that again. The spiritual legacy I'm preaching of is worth all the riches in this entire world. 
If you can secure your family and they are serving Jesus and you set up a kingdom and they're inside His kingdom of heaven, and I can tell you right now that is a forevermore inheritance. That is an inheritance that will last for eternity. Amen. It's an eternal inheritance. That's right. Matthew 6.19 it says, Do not store up yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Verse 20, But store up yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. And verse 21, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Mm -hmm. If your heart is really for your family, you'd be, you're going to be instilling Jesus into them constantly. You're going to be walking the walk. You're going to be setting the example. You're going to be saying, Me and my house are going to serve the Lord. That's right. And that's how you have to be. And for parents to be concerned about their children's developing into productive adults, it should be on every father and mother's mind. I promise you. It better be top priority. It must be. And I also understand this. There, there, there's divorces. We have divorce rates are out of this world. Uh, Christina covered that last week. Unwed parents, it happens. Okay. There's grace. Get your life together and get right with Jesus. And then you can, you can move on into your new creation in Christ. I'm not coming down on anybody. In, in some cases, people die. Parents die. So there's bad, severe, horrible consequences in this world. And sometimes they lose a husband or a wife. Although the dynamics may shift. And this is for you grandparents too. The dynamics may shift in whatever dynamic in your family is. But the idea and principle stays the same. You better be leading your children to Jesus. Amen. One priority. Leading them to Christ, setting the example, keeping them in church, and helping them grow in the Lord by all means possible. Proverbs 22.1. Check this out. I said it earlier. A good name is to be more desired than great wealth. Favor is better than silver and gold. Now, I know that at one time my mom and dad were probably not too proud of me. When I was living like I told you, I shared my testimony. It was hard for them. They had to stand firm by faith. But that was a heartbreak. I mean, I can't even imagine what I put my mom and dad through. But now, they have a joy in their heart. They have a joy because I've found God's will. And they're happy. I've honored them by changing my life and letting Jesus and the Holy Ghost come in and that power and making me a more than a conqueror in Christ. I have gave them honor by changing my life. But what I'm telling you today is you can thwart that away from your kids. You can guide them before they even have to have, they don't have to have a bad testimony. Right. You can set the proper testimony in front of them and they can be guided into Christ. They're going to have to make their decision Everybody's got a free will. We know that. But at least you can do all you can to stand by faith that you set that example. Ephesians 6, 4. Let me go back. Disciple them, instruct them, and love them like Jesus. Don't provoke them to anger. Lead them the way with a firm resolve. A firm resolve that we're going to live the life of a believer. And the way we live, I want them to live by that example. You want them to follow your example. So you have to watch how you live. In Ephesians 6, 4, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. That means you cannot just go off and set the bad example and just start telling your kid what to do and being all mean about it because they're not going to receive like that. When you instruct them, when you teach them, when you disciple them, and then you discipline them with love, then they can receive and then you'll see change. Can I get an amen? Amen. Raise them up right. This is the legacy I'm talking about this morning. Point number two, honor is the foundation. Honor is the foundation. That is an important word. Back to Ephesians 6, 4. In the discipline and instruction of the Lord. We just covered that. Discipline starts with children honoring their parents. Do you know that that's actually a commandment? Can somebody say, yeah. It is. Honor your father and your mother. Yeah. That's the goes along with thou shalt not kill. Yeah. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Right. Right? It's pretty powerful. Honor your mother and your father. See, now I, I live a life where the Lord's changed my life. Thanks, thank you to the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. I can now honor my mother and father. 
When dad will, dad, dad will be coming, he'll be preaching two messages back to back at the end of September. I can All honor right. him and he can, he can have honor that his son says, man, my boy is doing what God called him to do. Amen. And so he's excited to come over here. Amen. He injects into here. He, he, he's, he, he puts his, his two cents into this ministry. He's one of my mentors. He's one of my overseers because he knows that he wants me to succeed. But he also knows, check this out, he wants to keep me on the right track still when I'm 44 years old. Amen. He might call me and say, hey, hey, dude, I need to talk to you about something. Okay, I'm going to listen. When that old man says, I need to talk to you about something, or, hey, you best, he, sometimes he'll call me and he, he'll know I'm going through situations. He'll say, you need to take a break. I've been praying for you. You need to take a break. You need to do what you need to do and spend time with the Lord. I listen. At 44 years old, I'm still listening to my dad because I honor that he cares for me. A good father corrects or instructs his children because he loves them. Yeah. Just like the Father does us. Yeah. His rod and His staff, they comfort us. Yeah. Honor your father and your mother. And this is why, Ephesians 6.2, which is the first commandment, with a promise. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. With a promise. So that you, that it, it will, it may be well with you and that you may live long. Now that is a good promise. You see, It'll be well with you in life and then you will live long. That's a good promise. So you best pay attention to that commandment and honor your father and your mother. When they honor, uh, when they honor you, when, you're, when your children honor you as parents, there is a promise attached to it. And you want them to grab hold of that promise. And we all know that we can try our best. And sometimes the results are different than we had hoped. Trust me. Don't you think my mom and dad, they were sitting there at one point in my life thinking, man, I, hope, I wish that it was all different with our son. Don't you think they thought that? They think they were like, this boy has done, lost his mind. He is just a heathen and acting a fool. And we did not raise him like that. And I get it. But they stayed firm and their faith stayed, stayed pure. And God had given us a free will. And your children will decide what they're going to do. But if you train them up, and if you show them the things of the Lord, if you are serving Jesus and they see that example, they're going to look at that and your percentages are very, very high that they will either come back to the Lord or they will stay with them. Somebody say amen. 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 Proverbs 22, 15. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of discipline will remove it from him. I got the rod of discipline when I was growing up. Y'all heard the story when I shot the kid with the BB gun one time and my dad left the, the, the bruises. They were purple. But before he did it, he put me on his lap and said, I love you. The Lord says, if I don't handle business, then I don't love you properly and I don't ever want to see you mess up and hurt somebody with the firearm. So guess what? Because I love you, you are going to get a full-blown discipline today. And it was full-blown. I could barely sit down for about two days. And I learned my lesson. I've never pointed a firearm at a person ever again in my entire life. And safety in a firearm, he knew. He said, I, it's like touching a stove. You say, your kid, hey, don't touch that stove. You're going to get burnt. And he, you, know, it was like, you know, they're always trying to test themselves and you. You're like, if you touch that stove, you're going to get burnt, bro. And then all of a sudden they have to do it or they touch the barbecue pit. And then they're crying, then you gotta go love on them. You warned them. Well, what if you say, hey, if you touch, if you fool, if you don't listen to me one more time, I'm gonna whoop your butt because I don't want you to get hurt. You get my drift? You might have saved them from a bad burn. What if something spills up and boils and something's boiling up there and it could tear their whole body up? You see, you have to discipline a child. Proverbs 13, 24. He who withholds his rod hates his son. Now that's a scripture. That is a scripture right there. But he who loves him disciplines him diligently. You see, the belt and consequences change attitudes. The belt is an attitude changer. I'm telling you, my attitude would get right when my daddy pulled that belt off. When I saw him, he had the big belt because he was a bull rider and he had the buckle. And when I saw him taking that belt off and he would start folding it, 
my attitude got right. <laughs> he could still give me that look at 44, and I'm like, all right, I know what time it is. <laughs> I got you. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Amen. Proverbs 3, 12. For whom the Lord loves, he reproves, even as a father corrects the son in whom he delights. You see, honor equals discipline, and love is the foundation. When you discipline your children out of love, they will honor you for it. I don't think y'all heard me. When you discipline your children out of love, they will honor you for it. They will say, in the end, when it's all said and done, they will say, man, I see my result. I see, the, I see that there are consequences to when I mess up. And I know that they love me and that's why they are disciplining me like this. Hebrews 12, 11, all discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful, but sorrowful. Yet to those who have been trained by it, trained by it. You have to train your children by discipline. Afterwards, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. You see, everybody, who likes correction? Don't lie. All you. Dang, ain't nobody raise their hand. Nobody likes to be corrected. Nobody likes to be corrected. It's not something that you like. You're like, oh, that was fun. That was the coolest thing I've ever been through. Let's, let's have that again tomorrow. But when you learn how much people love you and they're correcting you for a reason because, they, because their life is on your heart, that they want to see you do the best you possibly can, and they know that you are making mistakes, but they love you. That, they don't have to tell you nothing. They can just let you go on and live your life. They can let you go on and live your life and not tell you the truth. But that that make me a poor pastor and that make you a poor parent if you didn't tell them the truth. You tell them the truth because you love them. Period. That's just how it has to be. And then if they reject that 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 if they reject that advice or that correction, well then that's up to them. At least you tried because love always wins. And so you know you did your best. You see, you can bypass a lot of foolishness raising up a child when you raise them according to the world of, uh, word of God. If you raise your child according to the Bible and the Scriptures and the Word of God like I'm preaching today, you can bypass a lot of foolishness in their lives. Prayer is the action on our end, though. Prayer in that. So as your kids grow up, like I grew up, my mom and dad had to stand firm on faith and they had to pray. He couldn't, you know, whip, I mean, he tried to whip my butt. He could probably whip my butt with his hands. But, you know, I was old enough where he said, man... He just made some bad choices. Now I gotta just set the example. I gotta stay solid. I gotta keep praying for him. And I, my faith has to pull through. Sometimes your faith pulls through for people, especially your children. But discipline and honor when correcting is the blueprint. Don't ever forget that. And also the equation is love and discipline on that scale. You have to have a proper balance. Proverbs 15:5. A fool spurns, spurns a parent's discipline, but whoever heeds correction shows prudence. You see, prudence means being cautious. Discipline opens the eyes and make ones and make and, and it makes one think. So, being prudent, they'll know in the future. I ought to be cautious about how I conduct myself. I ought to be cautious because if if I go out drinking and acting a fool. I could get arrested and get a DWI. You get my drift? Remember the two-sided scale. The instruction of the Lord, Ephesians 6, 4. This is the Message Bible translation, though. Listen, I like the Message Bible in the, in the Ephesians 6, 4. Fathers, do not frustrate your children with no-win scenarios. Take them by the hand and lead them in the way of the Master. Isn't that good? Don't frustrate them. Don't give them a scenario just out of anger where, where there's no learning and instruction to it. There's no discipleship to it. You're not leading them. You're just mad. That's a no-win scenario. The winning scenarios, discipline plus love, take them by the hand and lead them to the Master. That's Jesus Christ. The way of the Master, that way their eyes stays fixed on Christ. This legacy will be the greatest thing you can leave. I'm assuring you that. Point three, we're moving on. You have a responsibility. You have a responsibility as a parent. 
Throughout Scripture, God is pretty clear about the responsibility He places in the hands of mom and dad. And if you're a grand, uh, uh, if you're a grandparent raising your kids, this applies to you too. Deuteronomy six five: You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Verse six: These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. And verse seven. You shall teach them diligently, listen, to your sons and daughters, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. That should be something in your household. You should be instilling faith. You should, you should be telling them, hey, that's not how we're going to roll. The Bible says this is how we need to conduct ourselves, and this is how you're going to conduct ourselves in this household. Can I get an amen? Amen. You see, the Lord is looking uh, for you to guide them and instruct them to lead a powerful example. You see, the fu their future is not a joke. Don't take it lightly. Their future is not a joke. Don't ever take that lightly. Don't let them make the same mistakes we made. Are y'all hearing me now? Now I'm preaching from my heart. Don't let them make the same mistakes we made. You can counteract that. You can say, you know what? You set them down if you have to. You be transparent. Say, I made this mistake. And I'm telling you, it took my life in a direction that, that I did not want to go. And this sin developed in my life. And when sin gets, uh, when, when sin starts building, it just takes you places that you just don't want to go. And I'm here to tell you, I'm letting you right, know right now, you do not need to go in this direction. Don't let them make the same mistakes you made. Change it. Amen. Be heartfelt. Do it with love and be transparent. Amen. Your household should not negotiate in honor either. Discipline should not... There should, no, there, there should be no negotiation. And church attendance in your children's life, you make a stand, like I said a while ago, and you say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Like I said, when you turn 18, you can get there, you can throw me the double deuce, you can hit the door... But right now, you're going to serve the Lord, and this is how you're going to conduct yourself in my house. That's how it has to be. That's how it was with my daddy. And, and, and if I didn't uh, understand that, then I had consequences. Joshua 24, 15. If it is disagreeable in the sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourself today whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served, which were beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. That's how you have to make that stand. Amen. As you grow up and move on in life, that's the next responsibility. To fiercely pray. You parents have to fiercely pray and stand in faith that the Lord will guide them. Stay constant so they will see it in your life. You have to be that constant anchor. <clears throat> Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have to be that constant anchor. Like, so when I was messed up in life, I always knew that my mom and dad were standing in faith and they were always a constant anchor for me. That if it got too bad and I quit and, and I wasn't running and I could call them and actually that's what happened. And the day I got my life right and Jesus changed my life with his love, that's what happened. I called my dad and then things changed. There's not a greater purpose we can have in life other than walking the talk for our children to see. Did y'all catch that? Walking the talk. You have to set that example. Live for Jesus. Our children are going to learn about the world around them and their role in it. And I'm telling you right now, if they don't learn from you, they're going to learn from somebody else. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Do you want that to happen? Do you want them to go to college and get swayed away? Do you want them to go to college and get in a bad relationship and you know they're in a bad relationship and you can't do nothing about it because you're too scared to offend them? No, you pray about it and if the Lord leads you to that, you say, hey, listen, I need to holler at you. I don't feel, I think you need to pray about the direction you're headed right now. I think that you need to come back to Christ. Let me pray with you. I think you need to come back home and come to church and talk to somebody. Do whatever you have to do. But make sure you open their eyes to the reality of the direction they're going and change it. And I want you to see this. When we first learn to obey and submit to God, 
by obeying and submitting to our parents at a young age. Listen to this. That's how we grow. And that's how we learn to submit to God when we grow up. You see, when your children know about honor and discipline when they're young, and they ain't running around like little heathens and rebellious and telling you what's up and throwing fits at Walmart and all that stuff, and then you put up with it and you're embarrassed, that's not how it should be. They need to show you honor. You need to have discipline with love. Definitely have a powerful discipline in their life. That way, when they get older, they'll look at that. And then when the Lord comes into, and as they grow into the Lord, the Lord can guide them in the same way. You have an influence as a parent. You see, children are sponges. They soak up everything. And whether it's good or bad, I hate to tell you that, whether it's good or bad, but whatever's in your life, they're looking at you and they are watching you intently. They are watching how you roll in every single thing in your life. I promise you. They often mimic your mannerisms, yep. your lifestyle, your example, your habits, everything. They are staring at you. They're Like I said, they're little sponges. So my best advice to you this morning is to let them see Christ in all your actions. Now you're going to make some mistakes. I'm not saying you got to be perfect. We're going to talk about that when I close it up. But don't let them just see you talk about Jesus. Let them see Jesus in you. Let, let that light of Christ shine out of you so they have that example. And that way when you do make a mistake, you'll be able to be transparent with them and say, I'm sorry, that's not the way we should conduct ourselves either. The Apostle Paul lays it out well in Ephesians 5.1. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave Himself for us. The key point in that scripture, imitators of God. Be an imitator of God. That means act godly. Don't act like a heathen and a sinner. Ephesians 5.15, Therefore be careful how you walk. You, how many times have you heard this? this I've preached this scripture at least a hundred times already just this spring and summer. Look, be careful how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise. Yeah. Making the most of your time because the days are evil. <coughs> So then, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. When they see you stepping into the will of the Lord, they say, man, I have to find the will of God. I have to do the same thing that my parents are doing, or my grandparents, or whoever's raising us. And when we are imitators of God and the Word of God, our kids will imitate that. That's the legacy I'm talking about. That's the legacy that you must strive for in your family, and starting today. And in closing, another an analogy the Lord gave me. Excuse me. The first analogy was in discipline, the love, and, and the discipline on a scale. And then I, as I was praying and trying to figure out how to close this family thing series, this analogy came and just came into my mind and then I started praying and my heart caught it. You see, the, the moon reflects light from the sun. Did you know that? Yes. It's, it's not a big mirror in the sky like the sun, but or else the light of the moon would be the same. So the moon and the sun are not the same. It reflects some of the sun's light. When the moon is full, it's pretty bright. But even at its brightest, the moon reflects 20%. Even at the brightest, on the brightest full moon, it only re reflects 20% of what the sun does. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Or else the light of the moon and sun would be the same. And that's not what it's supposed to be because uh, in the Bible it clearly says the intention of the moon was to be a lesser light. Are y'all hearing me? A yeah. lesser light. Mm -hmm. Just as the moon reflects the sun <clears throat> as a Christian, we should also reflect the sun, Jesus Christ. You see, we were made in God's image but we are not perfect like Him. I fully understand that. We are all works in progress. I get that too. Matthew 5.16 But this is the scripture that goes along with what the Lord showed me. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. You see, as we grow closer to Him, as we go closer to Jesus, there should be some family resemblance between us and God the Father. Are you hearing me? Amen. Just as the moon 
on a full moon night shows 20%. Yeah. It reflects the sun. Right. So as we're growing in the Lord, we're not perfect. But I'm telling you, we have to have a shining of the of Jesus in our life. And right. it has to have a resemblance of God the Father in our life. Right. The things we say or do should be characteristic of God the Father. Because when you do that, you will set the example. Can we go back to Matthew 5, 16? Listen, I want you to read this once again, but listen, I want to change it up. Let your light shine before your children. Now you're getting my point. Because they need to see how you roll in life with good works. The good works that God prepared you for and created you for that it says in Ephesians 2.10. You are His masterpiece is what Ephesians 2, 9, and 10. You are His masterpiece, is what it says, created for His good works. Show that to your children. Show them you can also be a masterpiece with Jesus in your life too. And then you will fulfill the will of God that He created you for. Can I get an amen? Amen. And here's why it's important. If you truly reflect Jesus and shine His glory, others will see it, including your children and their children. So that means your grandchildren. I think that's so sweet. I love how the Bible talks about legacy, about your children and your children's children. You have to think legacy. You have to think of generations. If Jesus don't come, if He tarries, start thinking that your children's children will carry this legacy. And you might be the one to start this eternal legacy. If you're looking for God's will in your life, because I love, as a pastor, I have a lot of people tell me, I, I'm just trying to find God's will in your life. Well, I, I just preached a major part of God's will in your life. Set the example in your family and build that legacy. That's the first start of a major part of God's will in your life. Live it and build that kingdom legacy and build that heavenly inheritance that this world can't touch. You see, God has given us an incredible responsibility by placing children, in the gift of a child, the gift, the miracle of a child in your life is a miracle. But that miracle comes with a great responsibility. Be good stewards of it, like the Word of God says. As a result, it's our duty to teach our children about God. And we are in an influential, influential position. And what we do today, what you do starting today, will affect your child's futures. You hear me? Yes. Their future is no joke. Don't let them make the same mistakes that we make. Teach them. When I, when I was a youth pastor for 10 years back in the day, I used, to tell my, I, used to tell, I used to tell my youth every week, it was something we talked about, don't have a testimony where you have to come back to Christ. Yes. You live where you don't ever go back and go away from Christ. You live for Jesus because that's the greatest testimony. You see, but my testimony is powerful and I use it because it reaches people. But it's not the greatest testimony. You see, the greatest testimony would be somebody like my wife who stood and got saved at an early age and her faith has stood for all these years. For 40 years, her faith, she had never left Jesus. Amen. Now, she's Amen. made some mistakes, but her greatest miracle was marrying me. Yeah. <laughs> so the Lord blessed her for it. Yeah. I'm just kidding. The greatest miracle in my life was marrying her. Yeah. Because I probably wouldn't be behind this pulpit. And another miracle that was great in my life is my mom and dad. They live what I'm preaching today. And so I'm in God's will. And I'm able to speak to you. And I'm honored to speak to you this morning. And, and I'm so grateful and, and blessed that the Lord entrusts that with me. Because my mom and dad set that example. Amen. And when you raise a child like that, yes. if they drift, they're going to come back. Yes. That's so right. be encouraged by that today. That's right. You see, I'm alive today and behind this metal pulpit in God's will because of the concept I'm preaching this morning. My parents have lived it, and I'm forever grateful for that. And I'll end with this. Children, do what your parents tell you to do. <laughs> this is only right. That's what the Bible says. Honor your mother and your father. It's the first commandment. That has a promise attached to it. Namely, that you will live well and live long. And lastly, parents, don't exasperate your children by coming down hard on them with no-win scenarios. 
Take them by the hand and lead them the way of the Master. Yes. Deuteronomy 6.23 He brought us out of there and brought us in to give us the land which He had sworn to our fathers. Now that's a kingdom inheritance. Verse 24, So the Lord commanded us to observe, to observe all these statutes. Right here, check this out. To fear the Lord our God for our good always and for our survival as it is today. You see, when you put the fear of the Lord in, in your children's life, that means they respect the things of the Lord, right? Then it secures their survival in life. And they will live well, and they will live a long life. Jesus brought us out of this world. He brought us out of there into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. But you know why? Because He has a legacy He's trying to build in your life. And Jeremiah, not, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, with a future and a hope. That's right. You want a legacy with a future and a hope? Yes. This is what I'm preaching this morning. It's a kingdom legacy. A, a, a legacy that this world don't know about. It's a, it's a, it's a legacy that, is, that doesn't involve silver and gold. It doesn't involve something that will rust and the moths can eat up. Are you hearing what I'm preaching? Yeah. It's something that will last eternity so you can secure your family, your children, and their children. And you will be with them in heaven for eternity. Amen. Now are you hearing Amen. what I'm preaching? Amen. Live it. Instill it. And I think you can and I think you're doing a fine job. We're all growing in the things of the Lord. And when you're not perfect, you step back and you repent. Repentance means you step away from that thing that has you stopped for growth and you say, you know what, I'm not going to get into sin like this. I'm not going to get into sin. I'm turning away from that and I'm turning towards Jesus right now. Amen. And your family will see, man, you know what, I've got to live like that. I've got to have a repentive heart. King David had a repentive heart. King yeah. David was a scoundrel. Yeah. He was a schemer. Yeah. Read about him. But you know what the Bible says? He was a man after God's own heart. Why? Yeah. He had a repentive heart. That's he knew right. he could turn away and turn towards God, wash his face, put on fresh clothes, step in out of sin, and step into the power of that's Christ, right. and then a fresh anointing would hit his life. Amen. That's how you have to live. That's how you have to live. And I want to close up. Acts 16, 31, it says, They said, Believe in the Lord Jesus. Listen to this. And you will be saved. You and your household. You and your household. You see, there's nothing more important in life than accepting Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior. There is nothing more important. Everything I preach today, it, it, it involves that you have to have Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have to have Him as the King of your heart. You have to have Him as the King of kings in your life. You have to make a change. You have to really say, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. That he, was, that he was put in the tomb and He rose three days later for me. And that He is sitting now as the risen King next to the Father on the right hand, praying and interceding for me and my family. And when you believe that by faith, when you confess that with your mouth and believe that with your heart, that's when things change in your life. You are a new creation in Christ. The old things are gone. Behold, new things have come. Yes. Forgetting what lay, lies behind and reaching forward to the prize, to the upper call of God in Jesus Christ. That's right. That's what you have to look at. Yes. Because guess what? I'm not a dirty pill addict no more. I don't drink a fifth of vodka no more. I'm not trying to scheme people all the time. I wake up in the morning praying for people. I wake up in the morning thinking how I can make this ministry better and how I can reach more people. You see, old things are gone, new things have come. Right. He takes Amen. the heart of stone Amen. and He makes you a heart that's yes. soft of flesh. That's right. Amen. Because that's where the future and the hope is. Amen. So if you haven't accepted Christ into your heart, I ask you to bow your head this morning. You have to start with this. His love has always been there for you, like I said earlier. Take a hold of it. Take a hold of it this morning. Quit playing games. If you're not, if you're not 100% sure that you're saved, you best be. Because 99% don't work. 
Let Him change your life today. And by doing that, you're going to start a legacy in your family and your children's children. Start that legacy now, but it starts with you. It starts with your heart. And I'll ask you why your heads are bowed if you haven't accepted Him into your heart. Today is your day to experience a new life in Him, a fresh start, and to find that missing void that's always been in your life. You see, He created you for a purpose and He created you because He loves you. And He created you because He wants to spend eternity with you. Your life has a beautiful purpose. Be encouraged this morning. And your children have a beautiful purpose in Christ too. And right now you can find Jesus. If you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please raise your hand this morning. Today is your day of salvation. Don't wait till tomorrow. It's just us. It's okay. Ain't nobody looking. It's me, you, and Jesus right now. So if you're not 100% sure, raise your hand this morning and you watching online, watching live stream right now. If you need Christ, you raise your hand right now too. I want y'all to repeat this prayer after me, please, as a church family. Y'all repeat after me, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. And I'm in need of you. I know that you died on the cross for me. And rose on the third day with me on your heart. I would like to experience your mercy in my life. I ask you today to come into my heart and make all things new. To forgive me of my sins and wash and cleanse me with your precious blood. Make me new. Old things are gone. Fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for loving me. And giving me new hope in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I'm so happy. Give the Lord a hand. I, I just, I knew that the Lord had put this on my heart because it, it had really changed my life. And I hope that your heart soaked this message up. I hope that today you say, you know what? Uh, I don't know how this all works. I don't know how this faith thing's all work, but I'm fixing to try to step into it. And I want to see some change in myself and my family. Do it. I'm here for you. Miss Christina, everybody in this church loves you. We're here for you. And, and we're and anything it takes for us to help you accomplish that. But leave that kingdom legacy. Leave it. And I hope that you enjoyed the family thing series. It was beautiful. I, I, I wish more people would attend it. But man, we preached it. And it was so good. And we got so many responses uh, from people and messages from online that it was just life changing. And so make sure your family's in order in the days we live in. Stand firm in faith. Act wise and not like unwise men for the times are evil. And you have to make sure that your family's living for Christ. Does anybody?